When he's pitching and coming back into the pads, um, I make it Kane is a new batsman, Celerit Kane, 27 required from 14 deliveries. First delivery scored off of, 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 I think, during this over. And there's one over, one ball left in over number eight. 26. We have, even as uh, on the 19 players, still probably two, two years to play for that unit. This is high, hard, down. Oh, he made an effort. I think he misjudged it. And it went for a sunset smasher. Spencer is saying, I'm going to help my team. He has come to the party. 57 for three. 18 now required from eight deliveries. Spencer, no! It's going into the double-decker, and it goes into the first tier, and Spencer has smacked a sunset smasher. Yes, he really got a hold of that one. And Spencer is not a, a, a rabbit by any means, as, as you might be able to tell by now. Um, the Dark View Explorers would still be satisfied with the position that they're in. Um, I still think that they are, they are probably in a better position to win the game from here. Um, but Spencer is not going to make it easy on them at all. OJ Matthews. Matthews, let's see how he responds. He has one delivery to come. Two sunset smashers, and they are all home. It would be interesting to see um, Kotoi's approach here. Um, 12 runs, six balls, two runs a ball, essentially. Um, but he has stood at one end and seen uh, many of his partners return to the, to the dugout. Um, so the question would be, does he take it all on himself or does he allow Spencer to, to chip in? Well, we'll soon see as Captain L Lyndon James, he's, he has high, a ball in hand. They require six. Well, they have six deliveries to get 12. That is six deliveries to get 12. 11. We'll see what we were hoping to see yesterday, a super over. Lindem would definitely want to get Koto off strike. Um, never mind Spencer would have smacked those two, two sixes in the last over. I think he would much prefer to bowl to Spencer than Koto. Totally agree. Deliver, delivery one of over number 10. This is in the air. Hooper is under it. The same hands of Hooper takes Kotoi. The game probably goes with, with Kotoi dismissal. But we still have five deliveries. They now need uh, a 12 from five. 59 for eight miles. We told the people we're going to have a scintillating semifinal Saturday. It may be low scoring as we start, but it's heating up. Yes, low score but exciting nonetheless. Um, a leading edge there from Kotoi, who was just trying probably to get the ball into that vacant area between long on and the deep mid wicket. Um, had he timed it well, he may have gotten four. He would have at least gotten two. Um, but the leading edge resulted in a in a fairly simple catch for the player at for Hooper at long on, who bucketed bucketed it quite comfortably. Well, Hooper has been catching quite well, and uh, he may be in for the Jad Cash player of the VPL. Jad Cash is an e-money wallet service and online payment solution uh, launching in St. Vincent soon. Visit the website at www.jad.cash.
That's an excellent strike. strike. An excellent strike that went for a sunset smasher. Spencer is definitely uh, pushing her to get his team over the line. They need one more sunset smasher or for four deliveries. He is hitting with the wind. That is going to make it a lot easier for him. All he has to do now is ensure that whatever happens, he stays there. He stays there. Miles want to say something about this. He smashes this through extra cover. Down to the boundary for four. It's Spencer. Spencer on the go. Spencer has paid six deliveries. He's on 22. And Spencer has taken his team within two. Right. And this is what I was saying earlier about one player. All right. Um, being the difference. I think James um, odd here in terms of his length to Spencer. Um, I think he has gone too full to him. The Yorkers, but not quite... Um, getting them full enough and as a result Spencer is able to um, get under one in the first case and hit one powerly, powerfully to the offside in the second case. Three deliveries to come. Two needed to win. They are 69 for eight. Spencer. It's all Spencer. It's been all Spencer. We saw a drama yesterday where a team got two where there was never one. Spencer skies this. Let's see who's on the right to catch his taken. Drama, drama here down his way playing field. It's Sixty-nine for nine miles. Sixty-nine for nine. Two from two and one wicket to go. Tanti Mall should be walking into the stadium anytime now. I saw her earlier, you know. She she actually was one of those who was walking out very early. She said she realized we had an early start, so she wanted to get her seat away from those individuals that were that normally come uh, and don't have their mask. So she wanted to be protected. Jad, let's remind, let's remind you that we have a prize for the Jad cash player of the VPL. Jad Cash is an e money wallet service and on. We have a super over coming up here. I am calling it. Any bets? A super over. A super over. A super over. <laughs> well, there are many predictions up here. The two persons are saying um, the feeling team is going to win by one. One person is saying he's getting a single and there's going to be a super over. Miles has not made his predictions yet. Lovely one. cricket, not again today. Okay, one from one. <laughs> one from one. You can hear the excitement in the crowd. This the is scores a super are tied. Over, 70 for nine. 70 for nine. There's one required from one delivery. Miles, what would be your advice right here now for those two batters at the crease? Make contact. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't make contact, run. Oh, my word. Uh, this is exciting cricket here. We promise you a scintillating semi-final Saturday, and it has started the way we predicted. And guess what? We haven't gotten to the business end of things yet, the semi-finals. Can you hear the, can you hear the singing by Tanti Mall? Mall is just opening a basket. I see two Dukaners coming out of there. Oh, what is a Dukaner? Well, we'll explain that in a bit. Um, probably have Sam to explain it a, bit, a little better. She cooks. Lyndon James. 
Making sure his feelers are in the right position. What we will be looking for a Yorkerland delivery. No wit. A little pay, a bit of pace on this one. What do you think, Myers? I actually would not be looking for the Yorkerland delivery. Um, it, it's too easy to make contact with. I want a dark ball, a ball that goes straight through to the keeper. Well, Good length one. outside off. So. Let's see. He makes contact, and he's going to win. He wins it. Ja, uh, Rashid Pedrick wins it, hitting it through a wide-ish, uh, make it mid-wicket uh, position. He gets a single. Well, did he complete two? Um, they completed one at the end of uh, this game, an X.
winning the toss and deciding to bat. They are three without loss. Well, this is what you call um, semi-final pressure, Miles. Uh, because I, I, I went with my bet for two sunset smashers in the first over because that's the way the guys have been going um, all series long. And all of a sudden you're in a sem semi-final setting and, and they're just nudging it along, you know, putting themselves on the back foot to begin with from the first over. Well, we'll see about that. As Sunil Ambrose looks like he's taking his cap off now to get into the bowling business of things. Remember, uh, any player that uh, hits uh, the smooth um, signboard with uh, boundary four, they, he and his partner will get one smoothie each. But if it's a sunset smasher, they will be given two smoothies each miles. And that's, that's also for the President's Eleven tomorrow. So I'm just letting you know. I'm, I'm well aware. I'm well aware. <laughs> and I've, I've already picked uh, my flavors um, so it's now just to um, execute to, just to execute well let's see what flavor of delivery um, I, um, Sunil is gonna offer up today he has uh, the two deep feelers on the onside Play cautiously, I, I, I make it here, spare a diamond delivery. That is, I, I make it the fourth diamond delivery. We only have three on the flag, though. And we have had four diamond deliveries in this, in this, game, in this game already, um, Minister. Yes, 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 certainly. And um, a very, very cautious approach by the, um, very cautious approach by the batters. Um, I don't know what is going through their mind. The captain is out there, so he, he, he obviously knows what he's doing, but we'll wait and see how the innings progresses. Good single in the end. Um, the Grandine Divers um, boast themselves to have a very, very good bowling unit. I think one of the better bowling units when they actually uh, get it right in, 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 in of the six teams, Miles. Yes, they do. Um, they have bowlers who are very adept at bowling in different areas. Um, they have Rezin Brown, who I think might be the best Yorker bowler that we have seen for the tournament. Um, Asif Hooper, the captain himself, has done a very good job completing his two overs, usually in the power play, um, for very little runs. And they also have the experience... Um, Obed McCoy. Cutting this one away. Behind point. It's going to go into the bar. Completed 153 runs, a highest of 59, and at a strike rate of 113, 131. Yes, Hooper has been um, very consistent with both bat and ball throughout the tournament so far. Um, he recognizes that their, their batting does not quite has um, does not quite have as much depth as he would like, and I suspect that is the reason for his sedate approach of late. Making contact here in trouble is pair. Stumps are missed. That could have been close. Umpire Butler, you can see he was in, in, in the best position there. Another diamond delivery. Um, Minister Mackey, the, co the, the connection of tourism, culture, and sports. Explain that to us. Uh, because, you know, in, in, in other countries, we don't have the, those three uh, ministries together. Okay, I'll comment after this delivery. Yes, um, I think that um, all three um, cannot be separated. Uh, the, the various types of tourism, you have um, the natural scenery, the sights, the songs um, that go with that. Um, but the aspect of sport is becoming more and more important in the, the, the tourism product, as is culture. We have a number of festivals, and, and they bring a lot of persons, attract a lot of persons to the destination. Okay, that's a false start, yeah? Nine without loss. Uh, this is over number two. Grandine Divers are winning the toss and deciding to bat. Pairs on three. Hooper is on six. Good commitment there by Hooper. I think um, also possibly knowing that um, Jeremy Lane is not 100% as well, uh, Miles. Yes. Um...
he's one of those type of players. He doesn't miss anything. Um, Lane seems to... The question, um, this tactic, um, you have field restrictions on. I think it's the best opportunity to drive up your, your run rate. And when you bat through this period without getting to um, 8, 9, 10 and over, um, it really limits how well you can... Uh, the type of target you can get to eventually. And with that, uh, with, with that in mind, um, the partner for Hooper would be important. And, and as it relates to Romano Pair, uh, do you think that's the best option? Pair is a capable batsman, not a prolific boundary hitter. And he rotates the strike here. They are looking for two. Um, Eventually deciding against it. 12. 12 without loss. Uh, Minister, continue, I guess. Yes, yes. Um, I, was, I was mentioning the whole aspect of sports. Um, and we, we know that we have a number of sporting events that we, we host each year in all the sporting disciplines. So they bring a lot of persons to the destination. And uh, in the aspect of culture, we have festivals virtually every month of the year. Uh, beginning with our music festival, as we see this next delivery. Yes, we, we, we see that's a single. Yeah, we, we have the, the, the music festival, then we have the, the Easter festival events um, in April. We have the, the gospel festival. We have Vinci Mass. We also have Emancipation Festival in August. We have the month of October where we have several um, cultural events. And of course, um, we have our big festival at December, the Nine Mornings event that is unique to St. Vincent and again, it's the only country in the world with such a festival. Can you explain to us what's Nine Mornings? I, I, I don't go to those things, so I'd like to know what's about, uh, Minister. Okay, over, over 100 years, um, the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. That's a good shot. Uh, making use of a delivery down the leg side and bisecting the man at short, a fine leg and a backward a square. Down to the boundary for four pair moves on at uh, nine and the Grenadine divers in over number three are 16 without loss. Yeah, so I was telling you about Nine Mornings, the only country in the world where people get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go to concerts throughout the length and breadth of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have about 50 such concerts um, where we have the communities lighting up, houses lighting up, and basically um, uh, cultural events um, on stage every morning for those Nine Mornings. And... Um, it's, it has been recognized as one of the best festivals in the world, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines one of the best places to be anywhere on earth, uh, anywhere on earth uh, in December of any year. Similar to Javed, in my time, I used to bowl some googlies. I'm going to bowl one in a bit just now. <laughs> um, we're going to have Vinci Mass 2020 in, in Orcas, I was told. That's the, the Google. <laughs> no, it's it's not going to be called Vinci Mass because um, I think um, persons um, the world over um, they know that we have cancelled Vinci Mass this year, so it's not going to be handled in the usual time June July, um, and uh, it will now be replaced by a type of of summer festival. The first week of August. In fact, the Monday and Tuesday holidays um, that would go with Vinci Mass each year um, in the first week in July, they have been transferred to August. Um, so we'd have the August, um, uh, first of August on the Saturday, that would be a holiday. And then the Monday and Tuesday, they have also been declared holidays. So there will be a festival that would be put on. We'd, of course, um, await. Uh, to see how uh, the world goes with COVID and the clearance from the health uh, ministry will determine what type of event we ac eventually have. So you heard it first here on the VPL. We're still going to have a couple days of action, but there's action on the field of play. Romano Pérez is driving uh, the Grandine Dials forward. He hits another four. This was a bad delivery outside the off stump and could have been manipulated anywhere uh, by a batsman of, any co uh, of quality, uh, Miles. Yes, a full toss, um, basically just asked to be hit and pay, place that one exquisitely um, to the 
left of the feeler in the circle at mid-on and to the right of the, the sweep on the boundary. This one is a single down to the man coming from a short fine leg. The total moves on to 22. 22, this is over number four. Um, 35 from here in the power play miles, uh, acceptable? With five, four deliveries to come? Still be Lopa, I would think. Called a wide. Yes, yeah, still below par, I would think. Um, but the Grenadine divers would be happy that they, they have not lost a wicket so far. Um, so this has to be a launch pad from where they expect to accelerate um, right on through onto over number 10. Minister um, VPL 2.2 is already being conceived yes um, but even before we get to vpl 2.2 i think we would be looking forward to the t20 masters international competition uh, come october this year i think it's from the 24th to the 30th driven uh, through extra cover down to the bung for four uh, you can see the feeler was probably given up very early on that one as if Hooper joins the party they're dealing in fours you ask for sixes sunset smashes they're dealing in fours that's the Grandin Divers 27 without loss yes 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 so we look forward to the Masters T20 competition this year started in 2017 with 10 teams uh, we are now up to 16 teams with restrictions um, Asif Hooper goes high, hard, and clears the man on the widest mid-wicket mid boundary. That's your first uh, sunset smasher, uh, Honorable Minister. Yes, I had to wait um, four overs to get, to get the first one, but I still I, I will stick with my 10 for the innings. Um, uh, so I'm sure that, that that's the intention of the batters, um, to get up to at least 10 sixes. That's 60 runs just there after 10 deliveries. That will take them over to the 100 mark. He goes high, straight, and hard. That's number two for you, Minister. And I believe you may you may get your 10 before you leave. Yes. Asif Hooper has gone to 23, 39 uh, without loss after four miles, 40 after 10. Almost. Acceptable. Without loss, um, I think the Grenadines divers would be happy with that. Um, Ambrose. I think would be disappointed with that with that over probably um, his most expensive of the tournament so far. Um, he has been doing quite well with the ball, um, but Hooper gets the better of him um, this time. Yesterday, um, before uh, Sunil's team's um, a game at uh, the toss, I asked whether or not uh, the other teams are getting the measure of the soap on breakers. He responded, um, obviously, that that's not the case. The body language of soap on breakers in the field today, in those four overs, hasn't been similar to what we've seen all tournament. Yes, I think they would have experienced some, some success in, in, in the power play in most of their previous games. Um, so maybe this is part of Asif's strategy um, to, to deny them any early success. Asif goes over at the extra cover fielder. Is it going to be a challenge? And it beats it by six both fielders tantalizingly uh, into the boundary for four. Asif is on the go. And the, the score, 44, 44 without loss. And we are into over number five. Hooper, 27, pair, 15. Yes, that was a very good shot by Hooper. Um, I think he, he went falsely for pl placement before he went for power and um, I think the placement is what got the ball eventually um, to the road. Minister, uh, we know you want to go and enjoy some some of the sunset smashes. I'm not sure if you, you want to offer us any more information from the uh, tourism department. Looking a little rattled here, uh, the up on breakers. 
Yes, yes, I think that the, the, the batting team, they have stepped up the momentum and it sort of caught, caught, um, uh, caught the, the feeling team by surprise almost uh, because they started very slowly. Um, the feeling team um, just, just, just sat back and relaxed and then all of a sudden the runs have begun to flow. It was playing a sensibly one more down to long on gets a single 47 47 without loss we are into over number five and there are two deliveries remaining yeah i take the opportunity to invite uh teams from anywhere over the world come to st vincent and the grenadines for the team 20 masters competition uh, we're still accepting um, uh, applications for the competition so you can you can get down here and uh, be a part of that tournament from the 24th of October. Uh, it's about a week and a half the tournament would run for. Now we see the, the two batsmen now looking as if they're complementing each other well, um, as if pushing and, and, and getting the, the boundaries and the, the, the sunset smashers and pair rotating the strike well. A good single there. That's the end of over number five. 49, 49 without loss. Hooper, 31. Pear, 16. Current run rate of 9.80. This is a good um, platform from which they can launch. And as we've been saying, all tournaments, 90, 100, anything over that total is obviously uh, a defendable total. In a semi final, Roxel, what really is erased? It's basically the performance that you would have had in the preliminaries. Today, different day, all back to zero. They would be starting from that point. So, so Grenadines divers would want to really pick up and continue the, mom the momentum they have in this game. Sunil will try very much to pull it back, but let's see the approach by Asif as they have a, they really have a good platform in this opening partnership. Well, pulling it back, they're going to try to do with one of the more economical bowlers in the tournament, Westwick Estraw. He has the most wickets in the tournament. And let's just remind our viewers that these two teams played each other twice in the first round. In the first meeting, the Grandine Divers, they got 68 all out and the sock ended uh, with four balls to spare. Yes, they took all of 9.2 overs and lost seven wickets to get to 70. In the second meeting, the Sarpon Breakers made 92 for five, and the Grandees Divers just fell short by just five runs. So not much between those, these two teams in their, their, their games um, during the tournament. Wide signal uh, by the umpire Butler. Minister, um, your opportunity to, to give us a little a little bit more and to um, put the, the, the closing um, tap, so to speak, and the, ta uh, the, the seal on the bottle here uh, to our sunset smashing, scintillating semi final Saturday. Yes, yes, certainly. Just to comment on the game um, thus far, I think we are seeing the makings of a very keen contest. You just indicated um, that both encounters thus far in the tournament has been very close. And I think we can look forward to a similar encounter today. Uh, we saw um, some showers last evening into the night. And therefore, we see a little more green coming out on the, on the field. I know it was cut um, yesterday afternoon. And therefore, that's why you see the ball running away even faster to the boundary than it was yesterday. Hooper slashes this one and it is going down to the band, coming off of the cover boundary. He gets a single. A Westwick show, as we said, 11 wickets, a best of 3 for 7, an average of 10.73, and an economy rate of 9.08. Really good returns in the competition. Yes, um, I think this may very well be the all years that he has come, come into the attack. Um, maybe a little bit of a worrying sign here for the breakers. Yeah, 
has got in the boundary. He is bisecting the man at backward square on the circle and as well at a short final leg down to the boundary for four. He is adding to the to the walls here for the soap and breakers. It's 55. 55 without loss. Still in over number six. Three deliveries to come. Pair moved on to 20. Hooper is there on 32. Yep, and generally I think that we could be satisfied with the nine days of cricket thus far. We've seen some young talent on, on, on display. Um, we could be happy with the, 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 the runs, um, pretty competitive totals um, being placed in for most games. And um, uh, I think that we, in, for the semi-finals and the finals, we would be in um, for, for, for some, a, a good contest in, in both cases. Good run in between the wickets there. Good commitment. The communication between the batters have been good in this innings thus far, Miles. Yes, it has. Um, it's, it's quite clear that they have a plan. And, and they are walking towards that plan. And that plan is working for them so far. Plan here, uh, Honourable Minister, is to continue to, to promote SVG. He's born! Westwick straw, and you can see the elation in his celebration. And uh, Asif Hooper has lost his wicket, but I think he's done a pretty good job uh, at, by um, by all standards and by what they wanted to, to achieve. The Grandy Divers captain Miles. Yes, um, a, a key breakthrough here for the Southampton Breakers. Um, Westwick straw again, um, proving to be the man with that that touch for taking wickets. And a very important wicket here, um, Asif was the one that carrying the momentum for the Grenadines divers. Um, we see Alex Samuel um, coming to the crease, who would have a very important role. I think he misfired in the last two innings that he played, but he would definitely be looking to get back to his high scoring and, more importantly, quick scoring ways. Um, in this in, in this inning, Alex Samuel, 136 runs, a highest of 55, had um, an average of 22.67, but a strike rate of 170. That's how you strike, um, uh, Honourable Minister, when you were batting in your day. Yeah, you uh, most I, I struck with the ball more than the bat, really. Um, I played at the highest level, at the premier level, and I I knocked over all of the top batsmen in the country. As you, I, I think you're quite aware of that. Um, but I also scored a, a half century or two um, during that stint. This one is going to be called a wide. Uh, down the leg side is Strzok, trying to immediately um, take away that advantage of, of um, Alex Samuel um, freeing his arms. Uh, 57 for one, 57 for one. One delivery remaining in over number six. Yeah, and Alex has proven to be a, a six hitter. Uh, I've looked at quite a few games where he... he across the boundary with ease. Uh, I don't know if this would be one of uh, the occasions today. Well, he, oh, he shaped up and uh, that was his intent. But another diamond delivery to end the over. 57 for one. We have uh, six overs gone and we're down into the business end of the Grenadine Divers innings. The last four to come. Yes, and before I leave you, Axel, um, yourself and Samantha and Miles um, to uh, take us through the uh, second innings and the, the next four overs and the second game. I just want to thank you for having me on your commentary team. Um, it's actually the first time I've been uh, giving comments to the international world. Um, uh, for cricket match, that is. <laughs> because I've been out there um, representing the country where tourism is concerned very often. Um, but thanks for the opportunity and I just want to invite all come to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have all that it takes for you to have a complete experience and lots of wow moments. Um, we have um, all of the scenery that will take um, to for you to become ambassador of the destination. Um, we have sporting activities that you can come to um, and enjoy all year long. And our festivals are like none other. And I uh, outlined a couple of them to you early on. 
Jeremy leaning into the attack. Um, pair a mistime in that one slightly. Uh, go ahead, Minister. Yes, yes, yes. So come to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, we'd be um, ready and will, well, um, uh, willing and to welcome you and ensure that you have a great time. We have some of the best beaches anyway in the world as well. Um, we have the Salt Whistle Bay and we have um, uh, Macaroni Bay and Mustique. Um, black sand beaches, white sand beaches, um, the waterfalls, uh, rivers, and also um, the La Soufre volcano, the botanic gardens. Um, you can have a complete experience here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, the natural place to be and the Caribbean you've been looking for. Well, I'm definitely be uh, preparing to go to one of those beaches you mentioned earlier uh, after um, tomorrow's final, uh, after this uh, uh, sunset smacking um, 10 days we've had. But Minister, we want to thank you for being part and parcel of our production this morning. Honorable Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture, um, Cecil Mackey, thank you once again. Yeah, thank you very much. And Miles will, of course, share a lot more light on the, the T20 Masters competition. He's the person who is being behind that. Okay, Alex Samuel smashes down to a long um, to mid-off, gets a single as we again thank the minister for being here, sparing some of his time on a Saturday, our scintillating semi-final Saturday and uh, if, if, if the first game, as I said earlier, is anything to go by, um, the next two are going to be treats. This one is marked down to the, uh, the wide-ish uh, mid-wicket boundary and is easily caught there by O'Neill Thomas. Pair goes and the score is now 59 for one. Um, a little momentum being lost here, Miles. Yes, and, and this is my worry for the Grenadines divers. And their batting does not quite, quite have as much depth as some of the other teams that we have seen in terms of um, power hitting. Um, so when a player like Hooper gets in, um, they need him to, to, to bat deep into these 10 overs. Um, Samuel is still there nonetheless, and um, the new batsman, Shem Brown, has shown that he has the ability to score quite quickly as well. They would need a partnership between these two. Feeling off the outside edge, goes down to the man, third man who drops it. He parries it for a four. That is another four to Samuel. He has taken the attack uh, to uh, the South Palm Breakers. And uh, it's now 63 for two. We have one delivery remaining in over number seven. Yes, that was a, a poor bit of fielding. Um, they definitely had the opportunity to snatch the momentum here, um, taking the wicket of Samuel, who the Grenadines divers will be depending on to get them to a good score. Well, these two um, grew up playing a lot of cricket, Samuel and, and Lane, and uh, I know they, they, they go way back when in the, with these battles. This one is uh, again coming off of the inside portion of the bat and goes down uh, quickly to the man on the backward square boundary for a single. 64 for two after seven. Yes, the, the soft and breakers would definitely be ruined that missed opportunity. Um, it was definitely a chance to seize the momentum here. Um, I see Ambrose trying to get his guys fired up. Um, get them into the contest. They seem a little bit relaxed um, and, and not at the right tempo um, for this important um, qualifying game. Okay, so Straw, again, going to continue from the back way end. I think this is a big, big, big call to, to have him um, use his two overs with two overs to go thereafter. But and probably trying to build some pressure as well and, and, and ha ask the batsmen to have a go in the last two. Yes, I think they recognize that, that these two batsmen are probably the best hitters um, in this team. And they would want Stra, who, is their, who has been their best death bowler so far, to, to be bowling to them. It's 
Lorenzo White going down the leg side. I, I, I want to also say that from what I've seen from Alex Samuel to Straw, he's making a concerted effort to go, come closer to the delivery instead of going away and trying to, to negate that, that effect of the ball coming into him um, and not allowing him to free his arms. Yes, I think that he also expects a, a line outside Arsenal. So he's making sure that he gets across to that Arsenal early. Samuel has been given caught behind and he turns and he walks and that's the end of Samuel in this semi-final game. Grenadine Divers as it relates to his batting, 65 for 3, 65 for 3 and as you call it, um, he has taken one of the, 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 two, the two in the middle who could have propelled this total even further. Yes, and with that delivery again outside the off stump, Samuel... Um, opting to try to go to his favorite leg side and, and getting on the edge there and it was taken low by the keeper um, umpire Butler making the check with the square leg umpire to ensure that it carried which it did Richie Richards comes to the crease there are 2.5 overs remaining in the innings another 30 uh, 35 from here miles uh, could be a good, good, good a, a good contest Yes, I think a hundred runs here. As Richie Richards has been run out. Westwick tries on top of the game. He moves. I make it to, to, well, it should be 12 wickets, but another assistant as it relates to wicket taken here. A run out of Richards who was stranded um, after playing his first delivery. Yes, that was very good work by Strong. Very good awareness. Um, hitting Richards somewhere about his body and falling at his feet. He tried to make a few steps um, to, to, to attempt a single and I reckon that he made one or two too many. So, ebbs and flows. Lovely, 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 lovely um, nature of this game that we call cricket. The one we love so much. And um, we have seen the Grand Eve divers moving from being in a really good position to now uh, struggling a little bit um, to get their total up to about 90, 95 or even 100. 65 for 4 as Wayne Harper comes to the crease. He gets off the mark immediately. 66 for four. Yes, and with the fall of those um, couple of wickets, you can see the energy coming back into the, the Sarp and Breakers outfit. Um, they're now looking more like the team that they have been for the last um, eight, nine days. Based on Strauss performance, you would want to think that Sunil would have made a very good call when he brought him back in this attack. Yes, um, he has been asked now to bowl a lot earlier than he did in, in, in the previous games. Um, but the role essentially remains the same. Um, restrict the runs and pick up wickets, which he has done. Possibly the Jad Cash player of the VPL? Outside the all stump, and Shem Brown was smashing and slashing, and that one makes no contact. Another diamond delivery to add to the wickets that were taken in this over. Difficult going now. Jack Cash is an e money wallet service, an online payment solution launching soon in St. Vincent and Grenadines. Visit them at www.jad.cash. Score moves on to 67. And when we talk about the Jad Cash player of the VPL, the Jad Cash player of the Vinci Premier League will receive 500 EC dollars. Make your predictions for the Jad Cash player of the VPL at the official VPL Instagram page, vpl.t10. Jad, embrace the freedom.
good delivery here by Straw, mixing them up really, really well. And that is the end of over number eight. The end of over number eight, 67 for four. Brown and Harper at the crease, and they are both on one each. Two overs to go, predicted score. 10 and over, 12, 24, and two overs. That can set them up to close to 90, which in my estimation would still be short of what they were aiming for. With the platform, the opening batters set, I think they would really, really think they fall short here if they do not go over 100 runs. Further experience into the attack to, to even tighten things up more, um, Dylan Johnson Miles. Yes, um, very experienced campaigner, skillful bowler. Um, he will use his yorkers, his slower balls, he will use the angle that he creates um, by virtue of being left handed coming over the wicket. Here goes up, there is a uh, there was a, a, a question or two. Shem doesn't look happy, but he has to go. He's been out caught, uh, given out caught behind. And uh, that is the end of Brown. And they're, they are falling into a rot here. Um, I make it the Grenadine Divers. Welcome to our microphones, uh, uh, Kieran uh, Kotoy, marquee player for the four Charlotte Strikers. Um, one of the Vincentians that are applying his trade with the Volcanoes, the winner has Volcanoes and had a really, really impressive um, 2020 season. Oh, um, who's the new batter here? Is it Razim Brown? Yes, Razim Brown has joined um, Wayne Harper. And from here, Kiri, uh, they were the Grannies di uh, Divers. They were actually 55 without loss. They're now 67 for six, uh, 67 for five, with just about, I make it, eight overs to go. What, uh, what would they be looking at and trying to get um, to be able to defend? Um, Axel, thank you so much for that intro. Um, I think. I think um, 80 runs here would be um, pretty good to me. Is that based on how the surface played during your, your first game? Yeah, um, a few balls popped. I, th I think that the wicket is um, a bit slower now than previous games, so yeah. Okay, so we're going to have you helping us with our commentary and some comments uh, um, for the rest of the day, I, I think. And you, you actually won a game today. For four challenge strikers. That was your first? I was just, I'm just checking. Yeah, most definitely. We won our second game today, not our first. This one, he is heaving down to lawn. And under it is Shaw. Shaw cannot be kept out of this game today. And that's the end of Razim Brown. Grandy and Divers lose their sixth wicket, 67 for six. And they are in, 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 in probably problems here. There are a lot of problems possibly trying uh, to um, get 80. Yeah, most definitely. Um, here comes um, Obed. 